Good morning. It has been an extremely challenging time for those living in Florida and North Carolina. Parts of Florida have been devastated by two major back to back hurricanes. And in North Carolina, rescue crews have been airlifting people and dropping supplies to areas that still can't be accessed by ground following Hurricane Helene. Deputy Chief Al Wilcoxon of the New Milford Police Department was one of those helicopter pilots involved in these missions. He joins us by Zoom this morning. Deputy Chief, thank you so much for being with us. I guess let's just start with the, the obvious. What was it like being down there? Uh, it was really uh, challenging flying, and it was uh, great to work with all the volunteers down there. A couple of different um, uh, volunteer organizations, uh, Operation Airdrop and uh, Operation Hilo, and it was very gratifying to help out the uh, local residents of uh, North Carolina. We operated at three different uh, Ford operating bases and airports in there, delivering mostly medical, but also uh, food and supplies to everyone who's been cut off after the storms. I want to talk more about that, of course, but I, I joked with someone a minute ago. One of my takeaways from doing this story was New Milford Police has a helicopter. It's actually a really cool story how this thing works. So explain this. It's a public-private partnership. What, tell us about Eagle 2. Sure. So actually, uh, the program started in 1993. There was a tragic a drowning accident on the Connecticut River. And uh, the families of the victims who drowned got together and started a nonprofit foundation called the Nelson Dancana Foundation. Um, also commonly called the Eagle One Foundation. And uh, when an aircraft, a UH-1 from the Connect Army National Guard was retired from service, it was turned over to a local police department through the 1033 program. And the nonprofit foundation raises all the money for operations, maintenance, and insurance to run that research, the search and rescue helicopter throughout the state. So we actually have a total of three helicopters in the program in, in all. There's a, a single UH-1, which is a larger airframe, commonly called a QE, and two OH-58s, which are smaller, uh, similar in nature to a news helicopter. Oh, yeah. And we use all three of those uh, aircraft to do search and rescue in the state. Uh, it started out in Eastern Connecticut and Old Saybrook, and as that pilot retired, it was transferred over to Stratford and Fairfield PDs, uh, where I was a police officer there for 26 years. And when I retired from Stratford, we transferred the headquarters of the program operationally to the New Milford Police Department. So we run all three helicopters up here. Super cool stuff uh, and obviously uh, very effective down in North Carolina. So tell me about that mission because I know uh, we've been hearing these stories about uh, these places that were just cut off from civilization, roads washed out, just unreachable by ground. And that's where uh, you folks came in. And, and some of your deliveries were important things like, uh, you know, insulin and uh, EpiPens and other medical supplies. H how did it all work once you were there uh, doing that mission? Uh, it was great. So we got down there over the weekend. Uh, I drove down as part of the advance party and the command team, and we linked up with Operation Airdrop. Initially, uh, was at Statesville Airport, um, and it's really a grassroots uh, organization. They get all the local people who want to volunteer together with those donating food, water, uh, supplies, and medical supplies. And they stage them all uh, in accordance with the type of aircraft and the type of mission and area you want to go to. And they load up your helicopter after you receive the mission. They track you all the way out and then you check out and go to the next mission. Uh, and the Operation Airdrop folks actually get together with the local sheriff's departments and the local governments and they set these up from the grassroots. And uh, so we went from Statesville down to a small airport called Lincolnton. We operated out of there for almost two days. And as the operation shrinks in size, and by that I mean it becomes more concentrated. So it's uh, a lot of people are affected on day three or four, maybe, but by day seven or eight, it's really just in the mountains. And when that happens, Operation Airdrop partners with a sub organization or a different organization called Operation Hilo. And that focuses primarily on getting. Uh, the supplies, in our case, was mostly medicine that last few miles, someplace that a small airplane like a Cessna can't land. So we were landing in uh, parking lots and small ball fields where we would meet primarily um, first responders on the other end. Uh, some of them were uh, former veterans from the military services or volunteer fire folks or just volunteers from the local community. 
they come up and take all the uh, supplies out of the helicopter. We'd unload in just a minute or two and we'd be off and return. So what happened is we finished up operations late on Tuesday. And uh, that's primarily because at that time, the military started having a lot more Chinook and Blackhawk helicopters, which are much more powerful and capable than our, our small aircraft. And they were doing the missions up in the mountains where the real, real isolated people are cut off. And it's uh, different than Katrina because each one of these valleys is like its own little Katrina. They'd be cut off because uh, all the rain hit the mountains and washed down into the valley and wiped out a lot of these places. And they didn't have drivable roads going in or out. And the only way in or out to some of these places was uh, by virtue of helicopter. So uh, we've been working with them up until the time we were released. And we last of our elements came back into the state uh, last night. Just incredible stuff. And to see those pictures. And I thought it was interesting knowing that you had been down helping uh, doing similar work in, in Katrina and that description of, of so many mini Katrinas that you had to get people the, the medicine and the water and things like that is incredible. I, I've had the opportunity to fly in a, a number of police helicopters and, and respond to actual emergencies in my time as a journalist over the last 20 plus years. There's a weird thing when you get over a scene, and I don't know if you'll know what I'm talking about, where everybody on the ground looks up and is like, oh my gosh, help is here. There's like this, this hopeful look in everybody's eye when that helicopter shows up. What's it like for you doing this work? Because I, I know the people must be so grateful to have the help, but when you're flying the helicopter and you know you're there with the important medical supplies and they see you getting ready to land in that parking lot, what's it like for you? Uh, very rewarding. If I could just talk about the, our crew for a second. so. We went down with uh, five folks. It was myself as the aviation unit commander. Uh, we had a civilian pilot who helps out a lot. He's also a certified flight instructor and an airline pilot, Mr. Tom O'Halloran was in there. And then we had a civilian volunteer who was uh, also on our board of directors for the nonprofit, Mr. Steve Chabet. And then I had two police officers, Lieutenants uh, LaFond and Wheeler who work as TFOs. And then we just rotate crews in and out the entire week. Uh, I've been in the Connecticut, or retired from the Connecticut Army National Guard after 30 years. So I've done a lot of these kind of things before with the Guard and overseas tours and such, been to Katrina and 9-11, uh, but it was really the first time to see them work. Very, very rewarding. And the local folks down there are absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, they were bringing us food, water. Uh, they gave us free lodging while we were down there. Uh, everyone was just so appreciative, but it wasn't just local from North Carolina. They had volunteers from Indiana, Idaho, coming all the way down to North Carolina to help and for no pay. So it's just incredibly rewarding to see a community come together like that. And, uh, you know, there's no two sides of a, uh, a story. It's we're all on the same side to do what we can as quick as we can and then let the military take over the heavy lifting. It was really, really rewarding. Well, just an incredible story, and we appreciate you coming on to share it with us. And I think the uh, the local connection as people watch those pictures as the recovery continues is certainly important. Deputy Chief Al Wilcoxon from New Milford Police, we appreciate you being with us and uh, sharing your story. Thanks for coming on CT24. Thank you.